This is the Name More NBA podcast brought to you by Prize Picks coming at you Saturday evening. It's April 20th, a few hours after the Wolves' 25 point win over the Phoenix Suns in game one. And because it was such a earlier start time today, uh, we got the chance to go into the locker room after the game, do the post game, uh, get post game quotes and all that, and be able to put together a little bit of an immediate uh, reaction episode for this evening. I think I'm still kind of piecing together everything that that went uh, went on in that game, and we'll we'll continue to obviously talk about it um, throughout the throughout the course of the week, or at least up until Tuesday for for game two. But I got Kyle Taggy here with me um, to just give sort of both of our initial thoughts. I think like Kyle, in an effort to try and hit on as much as we can, I think we kind of work through this almost like player by player. Um, yeah, yeah. Just so we don't like randomly forget to talk about Mike Conley or Cat or something like that. But let's just start with uh, initial big picture takeaway uh, for you. You were there uh, at Target Center, as as would I, as was I, uh, taking in the environment and that game that a lot of people did not, I think, see going the the way it did. What's it out to you? Turn it back <laughs> one time. Uh, what stood out to me was the just the first like 30 seconds before the game tipped. Uh, you've been at way more home games than I've been at. But again, I know I can be prisoner of the moment and hyperbolic. That was the best atmosphere I've ever been to for at Target Center. Just no notes, 10 out of 10. That place was, the tarps were off, right? Every seat was filled. There was a whiteout. Um, and that's big, I think, for this fan base because you came into this 0-3 uh, against your opponent in the regular season not even favored in the playoff series, right? Even though you have home court and you're the higher seed. Uh, there was a lot of things that this team needed to prove, I think, to kind of maybe regain some of the trust or the confidence of the fan base. And the fans showed up. And then as soon as that ball tipped, uh, I, thought, I thought the team showed up. I was looking right. at the box score. Uh, they technically lost the first quarter because Royce O'Neal hit that three at the buzzer, which was a really good defensive possession. The Suns just made one extra pass, found Royce O'Neal. He hit a three. So, yes, they lost the first quarter. They won the next three pretty convincingly. Uh, but just, I don't know, man. They told me Suns in four. They told me Gobert couldn't guard on the perimeter. They told me, you know, Jaden gets a pay raise next year. You know, Nikhil was a throw-in. Uh, they exercised a lot of demons in game one. It's a long series. You got to win four. You don't count your chickens, uh, especially the ones that Glenn Taylor kills. But uh, you, you did exactly what you needed to do in the first game to kind of reset everything. And what did I say last week, right? Like bleep, che bleep chess, it's it's more boxing. They punched back and they punched back early. And I think that set the tone a little bit. There's gonna be right. so many adjustments and so many different ways that these teams look in games two and three and four and five and whatever, but they crossed every box you would want them to cross in game one. And credit to Finch, credit to Ant, credit to everyone on that team. Uh, but you know, job, job successfully done for the first one. Yeah. It just, I mean, obviously very, very fun environment, but just a fun basketball game too. That kind of gets you excited that it's going to be, you know, four five, six, seven games like this of just good basketball. It's been a full season of, to get to this point, you know, and to earn, to earn home court advantage and to earn the, the leg up that they, you know, they took advantage of uh, at least in game one, uh, Kyle, we, we knew coming into this that Ant was, if they're going to open the door, Ant was going to be the skeleton key, right? Mm -hmm. The way mm -hmm. in which he was going to be able to to play offense. Was he going to find a way or were they going to find a way to enable Ant to be a scorer when Phoenix was daring him to be anything but that? It was the question of, is he going to be able to get his offense without getting all the turnovers? And the answer was both. Yes. <laughs> like the turnovers. <laughs> right. And he did. Um, there was, he had four turnovers in the first quarter, six, six for the game, but he did eventually get going. They, they got him going uh, collectively by kind of breaking up some of that gap help eventually, particularly in the second half. And I just, I think part of the answer for any star player when you are being loaded up on and you have that rim, you know, that rim protector back there, that's always going to be there when Rudy's there right on the floor mm -hmm. with him. You got to get through the first guy. You got to get through the help and you got to get through the rim. Well, you could take out the rim protector element of that by getting your offense going through the mid range. And 
that's always been part of we learned that this season that's part of the answer of ant solving turnover issues in a game is when you get to the middle and there's not like not a direct lane to be able to make a pass there to take those shots and make those shots that's what uh that's what opened him up in in the second half there he made five mid-range shots just in the third quarter alone 18 uh, points in the third quarter which blew the game up uh to by the end of the third quarter Uh, the wolves being up by 20 and it was pretty much it was pretty much done uh, i was pretty much done by that point i thought that was putting that rubik's cube together ant and collectively doing it was that's the biggest thing to me you need that you need ant you don't necessarily need that third quarter right but you Mm -hmm. need ant to not be what he was a week ago um when they lost in game 82 and only took seven shots and i think he had more turnovers than that um yeah he they delivered uh, the the type of offense that they needed. Yeah, I don't know if we're going to go right into Ant right now, but he finishes with 33 points, nine rebounds, six yeah, assists, we can go and uh, six turnovers. And that's not a great number, right? Those six turnovers, four of them were in the first quarter. Mm-hmm. But I don't know, and I'll defer back to you. You see the game better than I do, but I didn't really mind any of the turnovers in the first quarter. I mean, game one is always kind of a feel it out. Bradley Beal said it post game, like it's a feel it out game. I thought the first quarter was a field out quarter where I mean, we'll get into Carl. Carl, I thought played an awesome first half, like damn near flawless, but I'm okay. If the only guy, and it was the case at the end of the first quarter, I think Ant might've been the only guy with the turnover, but he had four of them, but he was trying to kind of figure it out and it got a little, you know, a little congested, a little messy early on, but I think just, he was learning every time he turned the ball over. Mm -hmm. Uh, And that is what propelled him in the second half to, he was still trying to get off of it, still trusting his teammates and then the third corner, when he had trusted them, and he, you know this floor is a little more spaced, that's when he did what we said last night at Falling Knife, and what we said all week. If at the end of the series, Anthony Edwards is looked at as the best player in the series, nothing else matters, really, in my mind. It's like they will win the series if he's the best player. In the third quarter, he was the best player, and that's all they needed. Just kind of grind, grind, establish the run, as I always say with Carl, and then let Ant do what he does. 18 points in the third quarter, I think it tied the most points in a quarter in a playoff game uh, in Timberwolves franchise history. And that was it. Uh, He was fantastic. He looked completely different, Uh, kind of cemented or confirmed some of our conspiracy theories that maybe they went, I mean, Micah Nori Nori said it this week, but they went vanilla for the most part. Like they didn't show too many of their cards in game 82. And whether you think that was a good strategy or not, they had, they were not vanilla today. Like they were the full, chocolate Sunday uh with their coverages and the way that they executed on both sides so he was the best player on the court today and if they if he can continue to do that in two and three and four that's I don't there's no adjustments for Phoenix on that level because he is that special to uh we'll, we'll get to the vanilla the coverages how they they matched up with KD but to your point um with the turnovers obviously you don't want to have the turnovers but the way in which he was turning it over Finch kind of uh, agreed with that. I asked him about Ant's kind of arc of the game, starting with the turnovers early and finding his stride. I asked Finch about that after the game. Here's Finch. Do you see the arc of Ant's game? He had some turnovers there early, then kind of got to mid range. How did you see it open up for him? Yeah, I thought uh, I thought for the most part it was outstanding. You know, I mean, obviously the third quarter was electric, um, just spectacular. That's stuff we haven't seen from him for a little while. Like having putting one of those runs together. Um, and then when they started doubling him, he made all the right plays, and guys made some shots, and we missed some really wide open ones too. Um, and he, you know, he didn't even even the turnovers early. I thought, you know, he was trying to get to the right things. They, they weren't like uh, reckless. Um, so really pleased with how he played today at both ends of the floor. Kyle, I think that's like to to have that and to have him even just have a quarter where it was like, all right, this is what I got to do. Like knowing that moving in uh to to the second game if it you know you'd be even if the wolves were one and ant wouldn't have been able to find that rhythm you're a little bit more concerned about game two i think i mean and you know you'll see how we will see how phoenix adjusts here but it's good that ant can kind of take that put it in his bag all right we did this this worked i know i can do something against this team which he had not been able to do uh the the entirety of the of the regular season Let's uh, kind of shift to, to KD 
um, because Ant shifted off of KD in this matchup. We were, you know, that was one of the big questions this week when we were talking about this. How are they going to match up? Who was going to guard KD? Ant guarded uh, Durant in, in those, they played the, the Suns twice in the final, you know, week and a half of the season or whatever it was. Ant was on that matchup, didn't work that well. It, you know, Nas started one of those games and he was on Grayson Allen. Cat started game 82. Cat was on Grayson Allen. Well, they they switched it all up, right? In this one, they put uh, they put Cat on KD. They shifted Ant onto Beal. Conley went on to Allen uh, because you know Beal kind of hurt the Wolves in Game 82 as well when Conley was on him. Kind of you know being able to to adjust there, and you know you look at the game that KD had. He had a you know he had a he had a big one, but he was kind of the only one who had a big one and. Yeah, he hit those on cat, but they were kind of the kind the, the type of shots that you would have hit on anybody. It was the just the the lethal KD part of it. Um, what what did you what just kind of seeing that that was the way that they matched up was kind of what we were anticipating, right? What 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 stood out to you about um, how how they approached that? The most exciting play of the game was the tip, because when Nurkic <laughs> won it, you got to immediately kind of see the coverages, right? Because Nurkic wins the tip, and all of a sudden everyone scrambles to to go to who they're supposed to guard, right? And you didn't really know. There's no pregame like report or of who's going to guard who. This isn't like YBL where like you stand five guys in front of each other at half court and you like point at your person you're going to guard. <laughs> uh, but you saw, okay, Carl's chasing KD. They're going to put Jaden on Booker, and like you said, they're going to put Anton Beal. And immediately you get excited because like that's that's what I would have done. Right, that's what you would have done too, and then let Mike kind of chase Grace now and around, and then let the big centers kind of do it themselves. So, yeah, it was it was a really smart strategy by Finch and and Micah and all those guys. But it was also I was kind of texting you throughout the game, but it was kind of like a death by a thousand mid range. I I would be surprised if behind the scenes the Wolves aren't like, hey, if if KD goes for forty, like we'll let him get his, and let's try to shut off the water of Booker and Beal. You're not going to shut them down the entire series. But, I mean, Kevin Durant, I even asked Ant post-game, like, how great is it to have a guy like Jaden? And I said the word shut him down, and Ant's like, well, you didn't shut him down. But, I mean, you hold Kevin Durant to 31 in a playoff game, that's pretty good. And he had to work for it. I mean, it was 11 for 17. It was very efficient. But it, he did have to work for every bucket he made. And then he just, like, said, hey, you you do what you do. I mean, he hit so – dude, he hit one shot where I think Gobert, Carl, and Jaden contested him. He's, I mean, he is one of the 10, he's one of the five best scorers of all time. So I think their strategy on him worked. Can Durant get 30 every game in this series? Absolutely. But I think they made him work enough. They definitely made him work on defense a little bit when we get into Carl and kind of Carl just would get the ball in the post and go quick and kind of do that little turnaround. But uh, I thought it was a great strategy and I was really excited again on that tip to be like, okay, they're not going to put Ant on KD maybe in, in cross matches or, you know, throughout the game, maybe things happen. Um, they did play a lot of zone. So whoever asked the zone question last night at Falling Knife, it, yeah. <laughs> whenever, I mean, did you notice that too? Like when KD was at the five and they take Nurkic out, they went zone all the time. I don't know if I love that. But uh, yeah, to kind of bring it back to, to Durant, they made him work 11 for 17. I think he can do that every single game. But shout out to Jay, not to pivot to Jaden quick, but like, I thought that might have been Jaden McDaniel's best defensive performance of his career. He only finished with nine points, but Nikhil's going to get a ton of love for navigating screens, and he deserves it. But go watch, like, some full possessions, like 24 seconds of Jaden just navigating one screen after another, and he's glued to Durant. It was just really, he, really he did. We, we, we should say that McDaniel's was predominantly on Booker, but you're not wrong to point out that he was on, you know, that – that he was on Durant too. That was kind of a yeah. shift in the second half. We can talk about that with, with Cat a little bit. Cat didn't play much in the second half. And then they started prioritizing the Durant matchup more. And when they could get away with it, putting McDaniels on Durant, I think that's worth, you know, noting that if like, I don't think they will, if, if Durant does this again, you know, he was eight of 12 from the mid range, 11 of 17 overall, 31 points. It, it, you know, it did work in the sense that, you know, he was like you said, the one if the one guy goes for 40 and the other guys don't like you'll you'll be all right. Um, at the same time, you, you want to make it as difficult as as possible on Durant. And the answer for doing that is, you know, probably a, a bunch of different options. You showed him different looks uh, throughout the game. 
Cat was the primary, but Jaden got some too. Here's here's Ant on the on on KD and you know and just that that matchup there. See or hear the the playoff experience that he has? Do you sense a level of poise that you hope to get this? Yeah, man. Did you see him in the third quarter? Uh, like I felt like we were supposed to be up 15, 18 in the third quarter early, and if I'm not mistaken, he made four or five straight buckets like like it was nothing. Um, and I became a fan at one point. Like it, I was out there, like God damn, he nice. Like it's, it's nothing we can do. It's like it's nothing we can do. Cat was playing great defense. Rudy was playing great defense. And it's just like, he don't see you. Like, I'm looking at the stat sheet. He was 11 for 17. He missed six shots and had 31. He just, I mean, he's the greatest to ever do it, man. He's big, big. My hat tilts to him. He's the best. Three, three of those 17 shots were within 10 feet. And that kind of solidifies what we talked about all week, yeah. right? It's like, he's the master of the mid-range. You can't really, and again, that possession. You know what I'm talking about, where all three of the tallest players on the team were contesting right. him. And he's just like, all right, whatever. I'm going to make it again. But he doesn't really get to the rim much. Mm -hmm. And he's not going to take a lot of threes either. He only took two. He made them both. But he's, you know, maybe that's an adjustment they make. But he wants to just dominate you in the mid-range. And again, back to my death by a 1,000 mid-range, I I would imagine that, yeah, they're not just, like, happy that Durant's going to go for 30 or 40. But if that's what they're going to give you, that's fine. Because he's just not taking Carl off the dribble. He's not taking Rudy off the dribble. He wants to settle for that 20-foot jump shot. And I think the Wolves, you got to give them up something, right? This is a star-studded team with offensive players, but I think they'll live with that being one of the things they give up. Yeah, it, it's like a, it's an interesting question of like, do you have the patience for it? Mm -hmm. Can, you, do you want to just be patient? And in like 8 of 12 from mid-range, when you're getting all the attention that he did and not just cap, but the, the help, and to still do 8 of 12 is great, but you, you kind of, you think about that, you know, that's, was that 67% from two? Like, the Wolves can kind of match. Like, if the Wolves have a good offense game, like, you can just match that on the other end. If you are taking and making, you know, some threes, you're getting to the line. It's not like – it's a wildly impressive feat to do from the mid-range, but they are twos, you know? And there was – what I liked about when Cat was, was on him, they, they were – I'm not saying like Cat did like obvious like shut him down or anything. Did some some great job, but it, there was like Cat had a pain tolerance, so he's like, okay, you know, like that's the one we're gonna contest, and if he makes it, he makes it. Now we got to go do our thing uh, on the other side of the floor. Um, again, I think at some points, and and they didn't have Kyle Anderson, so Cat maybe had to guard him a little bit more than Kyle Anderson got hurt, so Cat had to guard uh, KD a little bit more than maybe they. They plan to. We'll see what's going on with Kyle. He was limping around pretty good. I don't know if you saw that yeah. down in the the locker room after the game. So not not sure exactly what's uh, what's happening there. But maybe maybe it is a little bit maybe it is a little bit more Jaden. But um, yeah, but like with with Cat, he's that that's the job is is to handle that there and be able to make him work. To your point on the other side of the ball defensively to you know, to apply some pressure, which, which cat did, they played through him in the post a lot in, in the first half and then uh, went away from him, uh, not just in the offense, but on the floor in the second half as they kind of got that run going in the third. But okay. One more time. Death by a thousand mid range jump shots last week on Sunday, the game that it was all over and the Suns were going to sweep and win in three, three games somehow. Uh, the Suns took 18 more shots than Minnesota in that game. They had a lot of offensive rebounds. Obviously, the Wolves had a bunch of turnovers. Wolves cleaned up the turnovers, dominated the glass. We have to talk about that at some point. But Durant kind of had the same type of, you know, he only had 15 last week, but same type of offense, same type of rhythm. And the Wolves took 13 more shots tonight than, than Phoenix. So, again, if they can control the ball and not turn it over and dominate the glass, I really do think Finch is going to be like, hey, if Durant wants to ISO for – you know, late into the shot clock on Carl or Jaden or whatever, we're just, you have to give this team something. Like Jay said it perfectly. Yeah. This is a second round series in the first round. There's just too many guys that are on Team USA for Phoenix. <laughs> yeah. You got to give them something. And if you take care of the ball and limit their possessions and limit their second chance, then let KD cook in, in the mid-range because you're probably going to get to the rim more than them. You're probably going to get to the free throw line more than them. And you're probably going to make more threes. So it was a really good... Um, you know, first game kind of strategy. I know we got to go to break, but we cannot start with Ant and then transition to KD and not at least go 10, 15 seconds on 
again, hyperbolic, but what I thought was one of the coolest basketball moments I've ever seen. When, when Ant starts cooking in the third, and we all know, because he's said it multiple times, that Kevin Durant is his favorite player, and he wants to go at him. And last week, we're like, was he starstruck? Was he kind of sheepish? Was he scared? That, that exchange where he is just barking at him, and yeah. Kevin Durant is smiling. That is, I mean, that's bigger than basketball. I'm not blowing this out of portion. That is, I've seen LeBron and Kobe do that. I've seen LeBron and KD. I've seen Kobe and KD. I mean, that was a little bit, this series is still far from over. But in that moment, that was one of the greats, one of the 5, 10, 15 best players of all time, acknowledging like that kid, that 22-year-old, I don't even know if he's coming. He's here. Right. And that was a, that was a cool moment. For, for Ant and for KD, and in postgame, even like you said in that audio clip, Ant acknowledged that he's still a big fan of KD, but what a cool moment for him, what a cool moment for 18,000 people at Target Center. Yeah, the, the it's, a, it's a mutual respect matchup for sure, and also, you know, wanting to beat each other, and, and that's what, that's why this is going to be fun, you know, for, for the next couple of weeks is that over and over again, and, you know, kind of going to be you know who wins more of those matchups too might might end up uh swinging this thing but yeah let's uh let's grab our uh our, our first break here today's show is brought to you by supreme lending and the dream team at supreme lending serves minnesota communities by helping you understand the true value of a home supreme lending is a national top 25 mortgage lender whose vision is to help enrich the lives of their customers because as we know right it's important the home court advantage as we saw tonight in this game <laughs> It's important to feel comfortable at home. So if you are in that process of, of, of home buying and, and, and financing your home, what we want you to do is check out Supreme Lending by going to twolvesmortgages.com. Uh, that's that's up on the screen. And if you mention T Wolves special, you will receive a $500 credit toward an appraisal. And what you can do, uh, what you can see on the scre screen is uh, Supreme Lending can help you with starting with the down payment assistant up to eight assistance up to $18,000 in down payment or closing cost assistance. They can help you close uh, within eight days. The Supreme Lending team has the ability to close a loan for you in as little as eight days, which gives you that advantage in, in getting uh, getting your home. And then uh, they also have a $25,000 close on time guarantee, a closing guarantee to assure you that they will get your deal done on time. Uh, if you are ready to get started, uh, scan the QR code on the screen here or you can call them at 612-431-2299 or head over to twolvesmortgages.com. Mention Twolves Special to receive a $500 credit. Uh, and then also, uh, today's show is brought to you, as always, by by Prize Picks. I was just kind of, I wrote down what all the, the Prize Picks numbers <laughs> were, were, Kyle, before the game. Maybe you can kind of help me through here. I wrote them down, too, in the app. Yeah. I'm over on a lot of them. So, I mean, a lot bars. of them. A lot of them uh, were were more than. What what did Ant finish with in this game? Points. Uh, what did he have? 30, 30. 33? Yeah. So his number was more or less than twenty five and a half. So mm -hmm. he hit that one. Uh, Jaden McDaniels was nine and a half. Jaden had nine, right? Yeah, you're so gonna be a one, sicko if you're doing over on Jane McDaniel's points, though. But uh, nine and a half was low. I kind of, I kind of liked that one before. I, I mean, there's gonna be an opportunity for Jaden in this series. Uh, Cats was more or less than 18 points. What did he finish with? 19. 19 green so, bar. Yep, green bar. Uh, Mike Conley's was 12 and a half. We'll talk about uh, Mike in a little bit. He really struggled in this game. Did not hit that. Uh, Nas Reed's was 11 and a half. Did did Nas? I think Nas finished with 12, 14. 12, right? Yep. So he got that one to kill. Alexander Walker's was six and a half. I loved that one. That ended up. Uh, being being correct more than there. Rudy Gobert's uh, was 13 and a half. And what 14 green bar again. Yeah, right that was... let's go. <laughs> um, so it's just a, a fun thing to do when you're watching these these Wolves games or other uh, NBA games is play a little daily fantasy uh, with prize picks. Pick some of the you know, if you've been watching another series or obviously watching the Wolves, uh, you can kind of, you know, strategize out how you think it's going to play out. Uh, and if you want to check it out, go to pricepicks.com or the prize picks app and use the promo code Dane for a $100 sign-up bonus. Um, we want to move into Nikhil, who was the the really cool story of this game. But before we didn't get to enough of the, the cat part, I just want to run through outside of the KD matchup and even outside of the success he had in the in the first half, kind of playing through him in the post a little bit. Like, they let him go one-on-one. I mean, they just did Durant one-on-one. -on -one. If it was yep. that, like, that's an opportunity – for Cat to score, um, if they're not going to bring doubles there, they bring doubles when it's like a switch or Beals on them or something like that. 
Um, and and I I I was kind of a theory I had going into the series that that was going to be a play a place to play some advantage basketball for them. Um, I feel like it was in the first half. I don't know. I'm gonna have to go back and kind of watch the second half to to understand why Cat, you know, just really didn't play. I mean, obviously they went on they went on a real run um, in in the like late third quarter. Uh, into the fourth quarter, kind of when Nas Reed checked into the game. I have those numbers here somewhere. It was Wolves were up 78-68 when when Cat checked out. Then it was kind of the Nas and mm-hmm. fueled run. Uh, brought it up to 105-83 there. Cat came back in for a minute in the fourth quarter. Uh, Wolves missed a shot. Suns hit a three. Finch called a timeout, pulled him again. So it was Cat played eight minutes, the first eight minutes of the third quarter. Sat for about 10, played a minute sat again um so i think he did not about nine and a half minutes in in the second half and not an indictment of cat that's playing to win you know it was Mm -hmm. it was rolling with what was working there's going to be a time or a place in this series or another series if they get there um where where cat is an advantage at all times in this series he's going to be he's going to give you advantages occasionally and then it's tough you know it's tough for him he's not the best person they can have guarding Kevin Durant on the team. Doesn't mean he shouldn't be playing in this series at all. Um, but, you know, if they're making it work without him, I was encouraged to see that, you know, Finch rolled with what was working, let the Supermax players sit for 10 straight minutes, didn't seem to have too much, feel too much pressure to be, to need to bring him back in. And to me, that doesn't just apply to Cat. applies to, you know, if Rudy was if something was pretty fairly obviously working with Rudy off the floor, that's okay. You can roll eight, 10 minutes without him out there. Other guys throughout the time, Jaden, you know, Mike Conley, whatever it might be. I mean, Ants maybe kind of gets the trump card of he's always going to, you always kind of play through his stuff no matter what. Um, but I, I largely, I find that, that the cat game to be encouraging and that there were, there were positive things from him offensively in the first half. He kind of did what you asked for him defensively. KD just hits the, hit the shots in his face. And then when they were rolling and they were getting out in those transition, semi-transition opportunities, that's a good way to get in offense, right? And those we know all season happened way more when he's out there with Nas Reed. So I liked the buttons Finch pressed in regards uh, to, to Cat in this game. And I think that's a, a big part of the reason why they won by as much as they won by. Wasn't it a great A cat game? When you when you think about how we spent a month talking about the integration of Carl and being like, oh, you know what, you know, I there was one possession specifically that I can think of that maybe got a little stray voltage. But I just thought, you know, if you want to talk about how much money he makes and he didn't give you forty five million dollars worth of production, I thought he came in and did exactly whatever Finch wanted him to do. He played, I think, the sixth amount of minutes on the team yep. tonight. He took the fifth amount of shots. Uh, he did have a couple turnovers. They're both in the second half, though, in that third quarter, where I think the first six minutes the Suns were really pushing and the Wolves got a little weird. But, uh, I mean, a minute and a half into the game, he caught the ball on the right block. He did get doubled, and he did what everyone hates what he does. He threw it over his shoulder, but it was the right move to Rudy. Easy dunk. He had a possession at the, where he caught the ball at the top of the key, just gunned one into Ant. For an easy little bucket when Ant cut to the rim, put on his goggles. Uh, I thought, you know, 19, 7, and 4. Uh, also 8 for 8 from the free throw line. Like he, Yeah, that was big. That fueled the first half offense. Because they were in the bonus mm-hmm. early in the second quarter, and that's when Good it point. was like, throw it to him. And, I mean, that that's when posting up is smart, right? If, if you're in the bonus, and it's either Kevin Durant or Grayson Allen trying to guard you. So he got a couple times on KD, right block, just dribble, dribble, little hook. Um, and that's why I'm saying it's like a grade A performance because Finch said, I need you to do this, this, and this. Carl did this, this, and this. And then he's like, third quarter or fourth quarter, I'm just not going to play you much. Um, he was also the only starter outside of Ant to hit a three. So uh, I thought he played really well, did exactly what they needed. And the integration was, we don't need you to be the best player. Probably don't need you to be the second best player. With the keel, we probably don't need you to be the third best player tonight. And he's like, all right, cool. Fourth best yeah. player, it is what it is. I, I wouldn't say A. I'd say like C plus, like passing. Cool. Well, okay. I, I don't know. I mean, like, I'm saying A in the like, fact like, we don't we need to we don't concerned. need to blow it up. Like, Cat didn't do a lot. 
he didn't like fail you, but he didn't he didn't do a but lot. But how much in how much game. how much were people concerned that he was going to fail them? Right, that he was yeah. They do were too they much. were right. They were they were concerned he wasn't going to be able to guard Kevin Durant, and he couldn't, and that's okay. We knew that going in. This is not going to be a good. This is not a good matchup for Carl. It doesn't mean it can't be a good passable series in which the team has success. Um, but he's got to do more offensively. He needs to act. He needs to act quicker. And if it's single coverage, he particularly on Kevin Durant, the, the, he needs to score. The, the second, I think it was the second or third post up. He got an and one on him. Good, like quick, decisively went at it um, a couple of times. It's just as always with him, you dial up the decisiveness meter a little bit offensively. And I and I think I think that's another thing they have to bring more of is more cat offense. I I think I think there's a I don't know, I guess to use it, it was, I was going to say, there's might be an 18 point quarter out there for Carl in this series. Maybe that's the most ever in franchise history. So maybe that's a high bar, but I, I think we get a 15 point quarter from Carl at, at some point in, in this series. Um, but I, I like how he didn't force his way into that. I think he stayed, he, he did not, he was not detrimental to them whatsoever. And I think maybe Finch preempted some of that. Or whatever. I don't know if it was preempting. Again, like I said, I need to rewatch back the second quarter to understand um, if there was something really obvious that Cap wasn't doing that that pulled him that that justified him him being pulled there. But uh, I have no problem with the the Cap performance, and I'm encouraged by the idea that even better games could could come from it. No, I think my grade is is ludicrous, but my grade is based on the fear <laughs> that he was going to come in no. and railroad this. That's fair. And I think your grade is ludicrous because you see that he could have been much better. Also, pregame, right? Talking to Finch, that was kind of wild. They were like, hey, so what What are some things Carl can do to kind of cook? And his answer was like, drive more, which is, I don't know, not something I think you and I would have yeah. said. Yeah, see, right? I, think like, I think like Finch says that in the sense of like, at the right times, drive more. But he but just he said, said it though, like, right? I, know, I know, I know. He's like, you know, the ship, the defense attacking there. And that is where, that is, that's where Carl... I think what he's referencing in his head is that's when Carl had success at times in the three games during the regular season. It was decisively playing on the catch and driving mm -hmm. against yeah. a shift of defense. He can do more of that. My preference is always if I had to choose between playing off the catch and driving or playing off the catch and shooting, like I'm saying shoot for Carl. I think that you, you can't turn it over if you shoot it. Mm -hmm. And and I that that's my preference there. I get kind of where he's coming from. Was a little bit surprised by that answer though. <laughs> I um, I, yeah, the, don't and, necessarily agree, but yeah, no crazy. Again, this goes into my A grade. No crazy offensive fouls. He did get called for an offensive foul in that first half. Do you remember that? Where it was like yeah, the sent him to the bench. bench. That was his third. Yeah, yeah, but go watch that again. I mean, that okay. was a tough. I did, yeah. That was a tough, like, I don't, guys battling for position. But I think we're both kind of right. I don't think Carl came in in game one, and I don't think he railroaded anyone. He saw, like, I mean, Ant, this is Ant's team, and Rudy was playing really well, and then Nikhil's cooking and stuff. He just did enough to win. Mm -hmm. That's why he gave him an A. Yep. But moving forward in terms of, as we talk about later, what can the Suns do to adjust? You're right in the sense that Carl didn't really have a good game. He had 19 points. He only took nine shots. He only took two threes. But that could be an adjustment for the Wolves of like in game two on Tuesday, he takes eight of them. Yeah. Because that I, one there, that he there's hit. There's a big, there's a bigger cat game coming in this. Because that I, one I, that he hit, I know you remember it in the second half, but like Durant was just giving a little too much space. So Carl yep. just got it. Offense wasn't really flowing. Just let it rip. Boom. Three up 11 again. Those types of shots for the best shooting big of all time or whatever, like those are going to be big. So that would be one feather to put in your cap as we talk about, you know, did the Wolves play a perfect game? Hell no. Like there's, there's things they can do better too. And one of those would be getting more production from Carl. Mm -hmm. Bring, bring out the DR version of cat in this series. You love I, that. I, I, I right. just think I, right. I, 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 you know, it's quicker, decisive. It's more threes fine. And that's what it, that, the three we're talking about. They kind of look like that. You like this is two, a good look. Cause it's me. Like I want him to think that more often, you know, who had two really good, just like, Ant finally got off the ball, and before the ball even touched his fingers, it went up. Nas had – you can think of yeah. those two Nas threes. It was one in the corner by the Suns bench and then one in the first half in front of the Wolves mm -hmm. where Eric Gordon had to sprint back, but Nas already was getting the ball up. That's what Carl needs to do. Just the ball hasn't even touched your fingers, and you're already going up with it. So I think Carl would be a big one that I would look at and circle and say he can give you so much more. But I was just kind of happy for him that tonight he didn't – he kind of just stayed out of the way. They didn't really need him. 
They won by 25. They're going to need him, as you know, moving forward at some point. But uh, And then to Finch's point, what I said earlier about you know, politics or any of that stuff, Finch coached tonight for 48 minutes to win the game. Yeah, And that's, I think that was a question mark, right, on the bingo card coming into this is like, is he going to pull the levers that might not be popular? Because I'm late in the third quarter, I was like, has Carl played? I, I got to go back and watch it too, but there was a sizable amount of time that Carl didn't play in that third and early fourth. So, yeah, good stuff by him. We've gone 35 minutes, and at some point, I would like to talk about Nikhil. Yeah, yeah, I I, I want to talk about uh, Nikhil right now. I, I I think just sitting there like, okay, we're going to talk about Nikhil. Like, how? What? What? What do I want to say? And I, I I think what stands out to me about Nikhil's game is I think a lot of us almost anticipated it. At least, like the maybe not the volume to which he play. You know, he ends up playing like thirty minutes because Kyle's hurt and all that. But I have come to anticipate consistency from Nikhil Alexander Walker because he did it for eighty two games. This mm-hmm. is one of the only players in the league who played eighty two games uh, this season. Didn't matter if it's the Wizards or you know the the Celtics. There was a consistency to Nikhil Alexander Walker this season, and honestly, like a consistency and the, the, like the level raised when they played Denver, when they played Boston, you know, we can think about the biggest Nikhil games were games that, that he stood up when there was, there was more, there was more on, on the line. He absolutely did that tonight. I, I asked, I asked Nas Reed in the locker room. Cause I think of, I think of Rudy's like the pinnacle of consistency. You can pretty much get like the, yeah. the same thing from him, but Rudy's 31 years old, right? Like yep. his, Hall of Fame career is going to be warranted based on the consistency of of his performance already in the league now 10 11 years whatever whatever it has been I think what's so impressive to me about Nikhil and Nas's consistency is them doing it at 24 years old right and I asked Nas about that after the game and he said I said why do you what is it that that drives the consistency from you Nas Reed and Nikhil Alexander Walker and he said quote I think just the grind where we came from. We both weren't high on the draft boards. I think we had to work to get to this time of year. Just coming from where we come, where we come from just helped us. I then uh, mentioned to that mentioned that Nas said that um, about Nikhil in the locker room when Nikhil was on the, the podium. I thought this was a, it's a little bit long, but this was a really cool Nikhil Alexander Walker answer. I thought, and uh, yeah, that, that kid deserves to be on that podium. And I'm, I'm glad so many people are going to get to see him play in, in these playoffs and also uh, hear him talk. Cause I think he's a real, yeah, he's just a, he's a great interview. I think is evidenced by this. So here's Nikhil. Nas just said uh, in the locker room, he thinks your consistency and his consistency comes from kind of having to earn it in the league um, and, and the paths that you guys take. How, how do you see that uh, to be with, true? I agree 100%. Uh, I had to learn what was going to get me to stick, and I had to learn what was going to make me a better player. I um, got to work. I'm not blessed in that way of taking the summer off, coming back, and I'm the guy. So for me, it's just enjoying that, though. Like, I love to play basketball. This is a game I love. I've wanted to be here since I was a kid, everything I dreamed of. So just putting in that work, trying to be great each and every day and improve, and I think what Nas said is 100% true because it is a lot of the hard work. And to be consistent, it's a lot of work. You got to do it day in and day out. And in this league, to have success um, with so much talent from guys who don't play to guys who do play, you got to know that not every opportunity is just going to be given to you, handed to you. And I've seen it firsthand through my experience. Starting, not starting, coming off the bench, playing DMPs, like crazy, like I've been everywhere. So for me, it's just about uh, what can I do to bring some peace to my life, some consistency uh, each and every day, and that's just working. Is this is this a hot take? You're there all the time. You're at all of these press conferences. By the way, I think we should acknowledge when we say that Nikhil is at the podium because now we're in the postseason. Like podium games are kind of a podium thing, right? game. <laughs> like it's kind of cool. Like when you yeah. get to go to the podium now yeah. in the in the regular season, you talk to the coach post game, but then you go into the locker room and that's when you interview these guys. But now, if you have a really good game, they send you up to the podium and it's awesome. But for Nikhil, 
there's some irony or some beauty or some poetry in the fact that like Nas had those quotes about Nikhil mm-hmm. because we love Nas because of his story. He was really good in high school, kind of flamed out in college, undrafted, and then he's kind of built himself back up. Whereas Nikhil was like a lottery pick and he was that dude. And he was quick. I mean, you said he's 24. I just checked. Like, he's just turned you know, 25, but he's 25. Like, he's a young guy in this league. And he was kind of left for nothing. You know, he was just thrown into the Mike Conley trade. DMPs wanna... like crazy. <laughs> yeah. So I, I do think, so my hot take, like, he is, to me, the coolest quote on the team. And anytime he does talk, I just love listening to him because you can tell that it's not media training or like it's not bullshit. It's, He really knew and saw that, like, if I don't mature and change, I mean, he talked about, like, what he was like as a younger player in the league. He's really figured it out, and he talked about, like, I deserve some of these shots that I get because you have to, like, I play good defense, and, like, defense is what keeps you on the floor. So Mm -hmm. he has solved the NBA Rubik's Cube of how to be a guy, fall off that pedestal, and kind of climb back up that pedestal. And to your point, you tweeted this out earlier – I'm happy for that kid that the whole world is seeing it now because mm-hmm. he he's not the MVP of this team this season. It's Rudy Gobert. He's not the best player. That's Anthony Edwards. He's not the coolest player. That's Nas Reed. But, I mean, 82 games is kind of a stat. Like, you watch Nikhil Alexander-Walker play and fight around screens, he might be the best player in the league doing it. And then to play every single game, it's a the testament same to way. The yeah, same, same way. same way, and he never gives it up. So I, I – Tonight really is. I mean, Ant was great. The KD interaction was awesome. Rudy, all this stuff. Tonight was all about Nikhil Alexander-Walker. It was the Nikhil Alexander-Walker game. He finishes as a plus 28. Yeah, man. Team high, 18 points, 7 for 12 in the field, 4 for 9 from 3, 4 steals. Ties a franchise record for steals for a player off the bench. Uh, and one turnover and only two fouls. And with all due respect to Jaden, no one had to defend harder and run around more in like in soccer where you track how many miles a guy runs, no one ran more miles tonight than Nikhil. And it was a perfect game. Literally, ten out of ten. That's an A. Yes. <laughs> they uh if you if you take out the garbage time that the Wolves Dude. won by five, they're in the nineteen minutes that Nikhil sat in this game, the Wolves lost by eight points. Well, do you remember the possession where KD cross matching and he got and he was on K D and yep. he was fighting he's like i will not let kevin durant catch the ball in the post on me and he battled his ass off and i think he got in front of him deflected got a steal but that is Nikhil alexander walker in a nutshell he Mm -hmm. is a three and d stud and he is the lifeblood and energy of this team and uh i was just really happy for him because he's a really good guy and they do not win that game without him uh and i would imagine moving forward adjustments all stuff he's going to continue to play top five minutes on this team in this series even if he's coming off the bench what, uh, what are you looking for in terms of adjustments, uh, things that Phoenix can maybe do differently uh, going forward? What what are like, you thinking ahead <laughs> of like, what what can Phoenix do more of game two that you got to be ready for if you're the Wolves? I mean, I, I think they're going to win some games. Like, I definitely am not Wolves in four all of a sudden. But at least for one night, you got to give me this. I, I feel pretty proud of my basketball takes because – I don't know. I think Thad Young will play in game two. I know that's probably not the biggest one of all time, but I don't think Drew Eubanks can play at all. It's just not a series for him. Yeah, but he was a minus 14 in nine minutes. I told you I scored on him. He's not that good. Uh, <laughs> I, I don't look at look at their roster. Like, what would you do? What, I mean, again, some of it's going to be I doubt Devin Booker gets, despite how good Nikhil is, and I mean, what, Devin yeah. Booker's shooting like 20% now when he's guarded by Nikhil. Like, I would imagine Devin Booker has more than 18 points. Mm-hmm. moving forward but I don't know like the Grayson you talked about Kyle Anderson leaving the game with that hit pointer we don't know what his status is Grayson Allen left the game with an ankle it's not a very deep team and if you yeah. pull Grayson Allen out of that for a little bit like they played Royce O'Neal and Eric Gordon 20 over 20 minutes and everyone else played minus under 18 10. minus 17 for those so it's two. like yep. if Drew Eubanks not gonna play Thad Young garbage time a Kogi garbage time Nasir Little uh Bull Bull like I, I don't. I would imagine Bull Bull gets some run. I don't. It's crazy. Yeah, I wonder. Like, I think if if Allen was out, maybe that's a Kogi. That would, or 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 yeah. maybe it's Eric Gordon. I don't know. Just to kind of keep the yeah more of idea that. of the offense and the five out or the four right, out right, or whatever. Right. But uh, that is one of the things is that this becomes a a fight 
and it's like who can last the longest and who can have the depth. The Suns' biggest adjustment might just be how do we just like Booker and Beal got to make more shots. Yeah, yeah, I think that's maybe not an ad- adjust. Well, I'm sure the, they will adjust things to try and get Booker in better positions to score. Um, that's just probably something that progresses to the mean a little bit. But to your point, right? Like, and what I think everybody should know is it's like it is going to be 48 minutes of hell for Devin Booker because, mm-hmm. I mean, again, provided they match up how they matched up, it is it is 48 minutes of Jaden McDaniels or Nikhil Alexander-Walker. Now, maybe do the Wolves choose to delegate more of the Jaden stuff to KD? That maybe opens up a little bit more for, for Booker. And then the 48 minutes of who's guarding Booker is Nikhil and maybe somebody else, and that gets him going some. But I, I don't know. That That's... That's less so an adjustment and more so a, you know, just an improvement from a good player. I I feel like, and and you know, we talked about this before the series. They went to more of the centerless look, KD, um, at the five. Maybe that's an adjustment. Is of is more of that. You know, if you got twenty eight yeah, minutes yeah. of Nurkic, then maybe they go twenty minutes of small ball. Um, I'm just not convinced that phoenix is more potent with kd at the five than they are with kd at the four in this matchup specifically because i think what typically happens when you go kd at the five is you're like oh now a center is guarding him oh that's already happening you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. like it when when it when it's at the four with with carl guarding him so i would assume that's like a gear they get into uh more often but I'm not. I'm not. I'm not sure it's going to work. I asked. I asked Rudy Gobert about that after the game. Here's Rudy. When they uh, they, they took Nurkic off the floor, center off the floors more in this matchup today. Went really small. How'd you? I mean, you guys played some zone. How, how'd you think it handled those minutes? I think it was good for us. You know, we kind of. I was kind of prepared for them to do that at some point. If they if they, if they struggled in the game, uh, obviously it's a great, it's a smart adjustment to try to, yeah, to try to mix things up and try to get us out of the coffin zone, but. Personally, I'm comfortable guarding uh, anyone, and uh, and I trust my teammates to, to you know to compete the same way. So it's uh, it's not not something that we haven't seen, but obviously with who they are and with the talent that they have, it's uh yeah, it's a fun challenge for us. Go ahead. I was just gonna say one one adjustment, kind of pivoting away from that for a sec, but thinking of that big. Three okay, can I can I do yeah, a little go. bit? Yeah. Can I do a little bit yeah. more on that? One, I just think it's worth noting that Rudy did guard Durant for a little bit um, when they went, when they went to that, that look there, Um, it was like a minute or something. Then they brought Nas and they're like, okay, we'll get out of Rudy's. We'll get Rudy to his rest a little bit quicker, bring in Nas to go a little bit smaller against that look that was in the second half. But when they went to the no KD or the, the no center minutes, KD at the five in the first half, the wolves immediately went to zone as you brought up earlier. And I think what, what's smart about that and what I probably missed in the idea of the value of zone in this series is that just forces this team to be a passing team. It kind of like, you could think about it from the wolves perspective. It kind of, it kind of puts them in the same spot that ant gets to when he gets into the middle of the lane and it's (laughs) clogged, you know, like you're now asking Phoenix to be a ball distribution team. And they are a very high turnover team. Like, I think of one turnover that Grayson Allen had at that, just kind of getting lost at like 18 feet, kind of having a jump pass, whatever, steal going the other way. The zone is a good idea, I think, against that look um, in that it's just, I think it, I think the zone will force turnovers. And now I don't think you can always do zone, right? Like if they do go to KD at the five for like, 15 plus minutes like they're going to probably figure that out some so you do need to have that other gear of like all right if we're not in zone are we doing rudy on kd like is is that our plan or are we are we pulling rudy for that time so as to bring Nas in so as to you know whatever to move to move carl on him or or do you just let rudy kind of take him a little bit more we only saw like a like a, a couple possessions of that i think it was two um but that's a you know, if you're looking at this from the other side, I think that's the argument that you would make is maybe we can go to more of that. We get rid of the Eubanks minutes. Um, we get 
to playing at a faster pace to making the Wolves move a little bit more. I'm just like Rudy was a beast on the boards, like with Nurkic out there. Like they, like if you go small, you lose physicality. Like well, they, you forget that sometimes. We always like rebounds. Explode. Like if you play five out. I mean, I know this sounds really basic, but if you have five out, if you don't make the shot. You're probably not getting the offensive rebound. Yeah, yeah, the or for have, them, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. So the Wolves have five guys in the you know inside the arc, whatever they're going to get it. So that's I'm your like you. extra shots point too, right? Yeah. Like the Wolves are going to get more offensive rebounds against that, and and Phoenix is not going to. I mean, who's going to get an offensive rebound for right. that? Yeah, yeah, and and I did, I you know this. I don't think it was a perfect game. I mean, Britt and I were talking post game of like, what do you think each coach is telling his team? And I would imagine Frank Vogel's like, hey, they played. We're just going to keep grading things. They played a grade A game. They can't do that again. Whereas Finch is probably like, we played a grade A game, and that's how we played all season. You know what I mean? Like, th- this is how we defended all year. So it'll be curious to see. It'll be curious to see if they just try to go small. I don't think Durant even wants them to go small the whole time because, again, like, that puts a lot of extra pressure on him that's a good to have point. to rebound more and to Physical. have to be, be the rim protector. But, uh, again, if because we're just doing this a couple hours after and we got to go rewatch these games, but – can't talk about Durant. You can't talk about him being at the five, and you can't talk about Rudy defending him a little bit without you know he sealed the game and had the dunk. But he was out thirty feet on Durant, and yeah. he was guarding him on an island, and he gets that little poke check, and Durant has to reshuffle to get the ball, and Ant comes through, steamrolls, gets the ball, and it's over. But uh, I, I I very much I'm not hedging. I think this I think the Suns can do a lot of stuff to try to win this series, and it's very much still a series now, but. Every day that goes by, Rudy Gobert has to have a bigger smile on his face that like that whole narrative. And you've been on this from the rip that that whole narrative that you can play him off the court. Nope. That's just because his teammates in Utah were terrible at defending. Like, And because he wasn't punishing it on the other side of the right, floor. He bingo. wasn't the yep. offensive glass yep. force. He wasn't like able to, you know, Rudy got a couple buckets on the interior. He will if they he will score uh, against that that small look if they go to it or. Or like you brought up Thad Young, that's maybe like splitting the baby a little bit, right? Of like between going all the way small and um, and still kind of playing a center. But what happened in game 82 when they played Thad Young? Rudy killed that. Rudy mm-hmm. had 15 points in the third quarter. Like, I don't know. Um, that was one of my takes or whatever in this series is that I think Rudy was going to have a really good series, win or lose. Or good series, yeah. win or lose. Like I, could, I can see like – the Wolves losing this series does not necessarily mean Gobert has a bad series. If that if that yep. makes sense, I guess that's the the glass half empty the, side of it. But the Suns yeah. had uh, three offensive rebounds. Gobert had six himself, yeah. and to kind of close the chapter on the scar tissue we have from Wolves Grizzlies a couple uh, years ago, the Suns had twenty eight rebounds. The Wolves had fifty two. That's Jesus. a big. I mean, I, there's a lot of things you can point to tonight that say that's why they won. That's why they won. But there is a lot of times people listening to this can remember that when the Wolves played, you know, busted their ass for 24 seconds and played good defense, and that shot went up, all five guys had were like at the rim going to get yeah. that rebound. This is not the same team that tried to rebound the ball against Memphis. So, yeah, again, I, I think Frank Vogel is a really good coach, and I think he'll come up with some other things. But this was the reason that people like me were like Wolves in six or whatever is because. If things go south for Minnesota, I think Finch just has more levers. And he's going to have to pull those at some point throughout the season. Because, again, like I thought they played with fire a little bit tonight, and they left Royce O'Neal wide open a lot of times. Like, hey, you beat us. I yeah. think Royce O'Neal can beat you. <laughs> he's a pretty yeah, good that, Or like the Gordons. or it's yeah, like like some, those One of those go, guys is going to have a 5-4, five, 5-3 five, game if you leave him that open. Eric yeah. Gordon or Royce O'Neal will have a podium game just like Nikhil had, yeah. right? <laughs> uh, and especially at home, that's what gets the juice. That's what gets them the win and steal a game. But, uh, yeah, I mean, they just they defended really, really well. And then, as any good coach knows, defending a possession isn't about just forcing a tough shot it's also collecting the ball Mm -hmm. and i thought that was the stat of the night was 52 to 28 that's good they just dominated the board so uh yeah incredible stuff by them uh in a in a game maybe we're gonna go into it now but they were able to hide other guys on the team like it was one of mike conley's worst games of his career yeah that was the last you know main topic i wanted to hit on is that he had a terrible game. My God, it was, it was, it was rough. And like, th- I was thinking about this afterwards. I'm like, man, I would have never thought the wolves could win a game by 25. And Mike Conley just have like a, 
even kind of bad game. Mm -hmm. You know, that was Mike Conley's worst game of the season, I think. I had a couple of sinkers mixed in there, but you know, there was like the occasional like once a month. It was like, whoa, Mike, like what, what? And it was, it was very much that they were, they were outscored by eight in the twenty-seven minutes. Conley was on the floor. Was he one of twelve from the field? I think that's what it was. Two for twelve. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Two for twelve. And he almost missed that that layup. Go watch that. Yeah, he took a little too much English on it. He almost rims that <laughs> thing. He's wide open. Yeah. So that means they won the twenty-one minutes. He sat by thirty-three points in in this game. Um, you know, I wouldn't obviously bank on Mike consistently playing poorly that you know that hasn't been his mo but this is we knew this coming and we talked about it um these teams that don't play a point guard and every guy is you know six four six five two twenty it's tough you know both both sides of the ball i think a little bit of credit like grayson allen had a bad game he guarded him mm -hmm. um that mm -hmm. was a good way of re we agree with the the way that they matched up and i think that's one way the matchups profited um was conley's the best of chasing shooters Yep. on this team and keep him out of Booker Beal matchups um as as much as possible but he needs to uh he needs to to play better. The Keels playing a lot of point guard as well and he picked them up in in a major way obviously um in this one Monte Morris played about 5 minutes each half. Uh that's I guess if we're talking about point guard somewhat noteworthy Monte is getting the minutes not J Mac. Um but yeah, they they need uh, they got good point guard play tonight because Nikhil Alexander Walker had played as well as he did. Overall, from the other point guards, Mike Conley in particular, they need uh, need a lot more. I, I think for once a game's a little bit closer, and that's Mike's time too, right? To kind of all right, this is a close game. We're in the fourth quarter. I am here, team dad, to kind of slow things down and and get things moving in the you know in the in the right direction again i think um I, I, you know i i wanted to play this because as, as poorly as mike conley played i think a lot of the players brought up at practice this week yeah. that mike addressed the team uh on the first day of practice this week and just kind of reminding everyone how how important or how rare it is to be on a good team that has a chance you know, to, to go to the conference finals, to make a, to make a run the last time Mike Conley was in the conference finals. He was 24 years old, you know, and, uh, Nikhil who did pick him up tonight, uh, talked about that after the game and Nikhil and Mike obviously go back to, to their Utah days. Sounds like Mike Conley spoke to you guys just about how much this, this playoffs means to him. What is, I mean, what was your, what was the impact of that for you to hear him say what he did? I mean, Mike is uh, like a big brother to me. Uh, that's my OG, and so he's helped me tremendously throughout the season, even dating back to last year, towards the end of my third year when I got to Utah. Uh, the bond that I've been able to kind of grow with Mike through these years has been special, and um, I think everybody wants it for each other. And Mike being the OG, the leader, everyone has the utmost respect for him. And when a guy comes out and says, what he says and his approach and what he's about. It's all about just being there for him, next man up, everybody coming together. And I think it was very timely and we did so tonight. I just wanted to plug plug that in there because I think Mike played a role in this win in that way. Um, and hopefully his, his play can kind of pick that up um, beyond that. I know you're, you're going to do another one of these on Monday morning with Jace. So no better person to have on than Jace, who's been doing the Conley Corner stuff. Mm. But I'll be curious because I know you and I are degenerates and we're going to rewatch the game after this. But I thought Mike Conley played bad, but I don't think Mike Conley took bad shots. I just, I, if you go back and kind of look at him, like I thought there was. No, dude, in the you, I disagree. In the first half, he was, he was pressing, man. Well, well, okay. Can I talk for a sec? I, I also yeah. think Grayson Allen. As much as you can get under Mike Conley's skin, Grayson Allen was getting I me. Mean, he had that one where he kind of went up for the layup. I thought Grayson Allen kind of bodied him. Mike fell down. Uh, I also thought it was ludicrous. Yes, I'm a fan. Yes, I'm biased. But that, like, Grayson Allen didn't get a flagrant one on that elbow when he went two elbows to Mike Conley's face. I think that kind of – so maybe you're right. Maybe he was pressing a little bit because he was a little flustered. But I don't know. I, I remember he had, like, a five-foot bunny that he missed. Yeah. He had a really good three-point attempt coming off the screen with Rudy. I mean, those are the same shots that Mike makes. For sure. No, yeah, right? yeah there, he, there was some. I, I, 
I was just talking about at the beginning of the game. I think yeah, he yeah. was kind of like, I'm not sure. Like, Ant had some of the turnovers early on, mm -hmm. and it was like, all right, well, I think he was like, I just don't want us to lose this first quarter by 10. And, like, he tried to dial it up and kind of take no, some that, of that no, on himself. You're 100% right. I think he was like, we can't. It can't be 44-22 again. Yeah. You know, and he did press a little bit. But I do. I go watch. I think Grayson Allen got under his skin about as much as you could. Uh, but he just, I don't know, I think he just did little things too. Like, even when he missed that little bunny and KD got the ball, he did deflect it off of KD. Like, that was a big possession to win. Yeah. They challenged it, they get it back. But, uh, yeah, I would imagine in the podium hemisphere, like, Mike will have one too. But it is nice to him. Yeah, he had a, uh, seven assists and only one turnover, so he did kind of set the table a little bit. But that just talks to the depth of his team. And maybe, Mike, that was one of the cool stories this week, as, as you just talked about, was he's desperate. I think Mike Conley is the coolest cucumber on the team and, and has brought an aura to this team that's really professional and mature. But something clicked in his head. He's like, dude, this team's really good. Ant said it too. He's like, Mike told us, like, this might be the best team he's ever been on. Like, we have a shot to do something. And maybe in the first quarter, he got a little rattled. But uh, the fact that they can win games again where, you know, Carl had a C-plus game and Mike had a D game. Like, well, you're focused on what Phoenix right. can do in game two and game three and stuff. Mike didn't play well. Kyle went out with an injury. Carl didn't really play well. Jaden didn't make shots. So I think there's a lot of, uh, to go back to our regular season takes, there's a lot of meat on the bone still from Minnesota when you come back for game two. And I would imagine that's going to be the type of stuff that Finch and his staff kind of look at is like, what did what did we leave on the bone that we can kind of gnaw on for uh, on Tuesday night? Uh, that's all I got for, for, for main topics here. Uh, Nas Reed talked a little bit about the environment at Target Center in the locker room after the game. I'll kind of, I'll play us out with that. All the chance, uh, everybody's here, the white out, you know, everything was crazy. I mean, I think this is my first playoff experience. Obviously, I watched it from the bench last year, but, you know, being in the game, it kind of gives you chills. It was, it was amazing. Uh, I think uh, uh, everybody who was, who was here to watch deserved a round of applause. And I think um, we, we definitely need you again. I think y'all are the real six men. Oh, uh, nice. <laughs> you know what's funny, too? I, Mike didn't play well. And Carl, you know, we disagree, but, like, he didn't play as well as he could have or whatever. I thought, again, I test, first time watching it, go back and remember, I didn't think Nas played that well. He did have that cool transition kind of thing. I mean, he's yeah. just a great. But there was a couple times where in when they broke down the Suns kind of defense, open they, they threw a cross-court pass to yeah. Nas, and he was wide open, and he hits those, and he didn't tonight. Mm -hmm. And I think that's another little chunk of meat on the bone that, like, he's going to hit those. I agree with that. So mm -hmm. uh, to come out of a game, man, and win by 25 – I mean, I don't know if you want to talk about Luca Garza. He just scores every minute he's in the game. But uh, really cool, and it was a really important game. I, I didn't want to go over the top last night. We did our show and say that it was a must win because it is game one. But, uh, you know, the series. I think of, it was, man. I, I know. I didn't want to say it, but I kind of felt it this morning that if they lose that game and now you're 4-0-4 or against them, you just don't have any punches or bolts in the chamber. They did what they had to do. It could be a long series. Or, you know, what I believe – keep calling it a glass jaw a little bit. Like I think if they come back out and punch him again and play his 48 minutes like they did tonight on Tuesday, you know, Brit, the great Britt Robson said last night that it's math. This whole game is math. They went on Tuesday and you're up 2 nothing, and you're a team that hasn't lost three games all season. The math tells you you're not going to lose the series because, you know, you can't lose three games in a row. So I, uh, I'm, I, it's going to be incredible to see what they can do, but – they got what they needed to do today, and uh, Tuesday is going to be as big of a game. And to Nas's point, the sixth man or whatever, or the twelfth man, and see, like, I hope that place is as loud because I thought being there tonight, it was one of the coolest atmospheres ever. And it's it's cool for the the city and it's cool for the fan base to yeah. see again people throwing out retro clothes and all these different Jake's Graff shirts and stuff. Uh, it's a basketball town right now, and I thought the fans came out and played just as well as Ant today or or KD. Yeah, it was absolutely uh, a factor in this one. And, yeah, at the end of the day, that's what this is kind of about, right? You know, having fun and enjoying it, which is something that has been obviously so rare here. And <laughs> hey, shout out to the guy. Uh, if, if you were one of the 18,000 fans that got to show up, the guy that was shooting threes for a grill <laughs> missed 30 straight shots to the right. It would just remind me of like when you play like hot shot or whatever, where you flip the basketball. I was like, can you just move the slider over a little bit? I was like, my God. So he made one with nine seconds left. He got a grill shot to him. But uh, that was my only other note was, hey, if you're going to be in a shooting competition, I, he had to have been drinking. But uh, don't drink. Go win a grill.
That's all He's I got. Kyle Tiggy. Uh Follow him uh, on Twitter at, at Kyle Tiggy. And you guys are doing Flagrant House tomorrow? Uh, yeah, Monday. No? I might go Monday. tomorrow. But, uh, there you go. As long as it warms up. Cool. Um, well, you can check out. You can get more Kyle there on Monday. And uh, on this show, it'll be me and Jace will... Dig into, you know, maybe try and find some more plot points uh, to, to get to from here. Drill into some of this stuff uh, a little bit deeper. Uh, Kyle, appreciate you doing it. And uh, yeah, until until Monday with Chase, he's Kyle. I'm Dane. Peace out. How I'm feeling, man, I hope it never stop, yeah. Green and hot so you can find me in the crowd, yeah, yeah. Don't let standards ever, ever bring you down, yeah.